My Blight is an awesome league starter. For the past leagues, I started with Blight every time, and it's always been fun for me. It requires practically no budget, but it's still a bit scalable. And the Blight map itself requires practically no build if done correctly, but obviously helping your towers will complete the maps quicker. So why is it good? Well, first of all, you can drop a lot of good uniques that could possibly be some meta uniques that are quite common, but still not common enough for just everyone to find them. Um, uniques drop quite frequently everywhere, and there is a chance that you can drop, well, pretty much any unique <laughs> out there. So there's there's always chances for a headhunter or a mageblood. Um, there's tons, like bubblegum currency is insane here. You're going to have so many chaos orbs. You're going to have so much raw alchemies. You're going to have raw, um, well, basically all bubblegum currency. And all of this adds up after time, uh, especially early league. Things like orbs of regret, um, orbs of unmakings. Uh, chisels, those are things that are really, really good early on that are quite expensive, that is quite easy to flip, and that's like a, a strategy that I might talk about. Maybe I'll make a separate video on like League Start strategies about that. Also, this strat is great for Chaos Recipes. If you want to get your first 20, 100, whatever Chaos Orbs, then this is going to be awesome because it drops all types of uniques and it drops an abundance of them. So as long as your map mob level fits the item level of, you know, the Chaos Recipe, uh, which is like, I think, level 60 to 70, something like that, uh, then absolutely you're gonna get a ton of Chaos Orbs. Uh, the next thing that is great is oils. Well, a lot of people are going to start anointing their gear, especially um, if it gives them a good early on buff for amulets, for uh, any other, you know, ring anointments as well, uh, if, if it helps. And first of all, it's gonna be helpful for you as well in order to get those Meteor Towers and Freezing Towers uh, anointed on your rings. So anointments overall is something that every build needs and it's an upgrade for every build. So if you have a nice stock of those and not many people farm Blight early on, you can set a pretty good price on these and you can sell a lot of these. Uh, early on, people like to have the early advantage, so they will pay really weird currency for basic anointments, even if it's early on. So if we check something like silver oils, literally the first day they sell for 13 something chaos up to 24 uh, just a couple of days later. So the price on these is really, really good because 13 chaos early league does not, it, it does not mean that it is, you know, worth less or more because everything is cheap early league. Everything is cheap early league. So you need to understand the prices only start stabilizing probably after the first two weeks of the league. That's when prices start stabilizing. So selling, you know, as, as expensive as you can early league will grant you a great advantage um, over everyone else. You're also going to have a lot of scarabs. Usually they're going to be only rusted or polished but uh, most commonly it's still a lot of scarabs that you can do. You know, before uh, people start juicing, you can already stock up on a nice amount of scarabs and also start selling those and just exchanging them in the harvest station. Uh, and it's going to be pretty much free for you because at the same time that you're going to be farming the blight maps, you're also going to be running harvest on the Atlas strategy. Uh, I have a, I can link the video, it's going to be on the top of the screen right now. Uh, you, th that's my Blight strategy guide that I was talking about, so there you farm Blight and Harvest and you're going to get tons of maps, so it's just going to be especially well for, for anything that you want to do. Uh, stack decks. Stack decks drop a ton. You're going to have hundreds of those after some time. Uh, early league stack decks are, well, not that expensive. Um, anyways, like having stack decks, you can either open them or you can bulk sell them uh, on TFT, anywhere you want to do. Um, Stack decks are always great. It's always great currency. Uh, you're also going to have um, a lot of fractured and synthesized items. So obviously fractured and synth items are going to be much better on a higher item level base. Uh, this is well known for, I guess, everyone. It's quite logical. Obviously the bases are really important. However, early league, it's not that of a focus to have best in slot gear uh, when you can get, let's say, a plus one power charges on a worse base, but you can have a plus one power charges shield. Like, that plus one power charge is going to grant you probably more uh, upgrades than having uh, a better base early on in the league if you sell it for much cheaper because you have it on a crappy base. So, 
like it's these things level out and and having you know a, a good fractured item like fractured jewels uh you can get fractured percent life uh that will make it instantly that many chaos more uh you can get some fractured crit multi or double crit multi fracture whatever i i don't know there's so many different uh, you know things that you can actually drop from fractured and synth items that it makes it well worthwhile to just you know pick them up quickly identify it and throw it out back on the ground uh, unless your loot filter is also done nicely that you only have the high tiers but early league the high tiers are not going to really show up so you're probably better off actually showing the low tiers too and trying to identify them it takes extra time but hey if you hit the jackpot you hit the jackpot and you won't hit it if you don't roll any tickets right so the tickets are free they're given to you and it's like you were not even trying to take a penny to scratch them off like Scratch them off with a wisdom scroll, see, throw it out if it's garbage, and then continue. What you can also do is just instantly put them all into a dump tab, identify them all, like all of these different synth and fractured items, put them in a quad tab, uh, and then search for like the most common, most uh, best synth and fractured uh, rolls, and just look over them, what's there, what's not, and then just fender it, basically. Um, and actually, Blight is really good. Uh, Blight is really good for XP. Uh, surprisingly, uh, especially if you use the oil for XP, which is, I don't remember what oil it was, but there's still an oil for XP, which I wouldn't recommend because anyways, the XP is pretty good. Um, just running these maps will grant you a lot of XP since you don't die that often as well, unless you do some things that will be quite stupid. So, you know, it's it's a win-win situation, like the XP that you're getting from these maps are really cool because the mobs are spawning, they're coming towards you, so it's quite easy to kill them, especially when the towers are helping you. And then at the same time, you know, you have so many of these mobs, it's just like a nice chill way uh, if your gear isn't as good enough or if you need some extra chaos, you need to do those things. It's really, really good. Um, and on top of what I was talking before, when we have our fractured and synth items and we get something good, um, you can actually probably craft some of these average items for the League starter builds. If you find out what starts to be popular after patch notes, after these things, um, you'll see all kinds of different YouTube creators like, I don't know, Travic or Try, maybe possibly Local Hall showcasing his build. You know, th th those are people that really make some builds popular. And once you see that those builds are popular, uh, especially by bigger YouTubers, most of these items that are going to be, let's say, an average item are going to actually be expensive, especially like six link chests with certain roles and mods on it. People will be searching those roles and mods. Basically copy those items from that path of building or from that loot guide, see how expensive that is and how easy it is to actually craft if you know basics of crafting. And once you have these fractured synth items, whatever, you can start just crafting those average items for those leaks that are built. And I could possibly make a video on that if anybody would be interested to see how to find these items uh, in more detail, how to craft them, um, and maybe just make like a separate little short crafting video. I'm more than open to do stuff like that, so please let me know in the comments. Um, another great thing about Blight overall and farming it, it's still that you can still do map completion. Uh, what I mean by that is the Blight map itself obviously doesn't give you map completion, but when you're farming these maps, because we're not buying these maps, we're gonna cheap it out over here, we can drop a lot of these maps, right? Especially some of our favorited maps. That's going to be even better because we're going to be doing some nice maps that have good layouts. And good layouts are really important early on if you don't have really good gear, because sometimes you do need to help your towers, and if you have a bad layout map, it can sometimes get really crazy. So what you can do is when doing and completing your atlas, when you're out of maps, when you just want to farm some more, you can still progress your atlas without a problem. All you need to do is just add a scarab or add mycelial swarm. Um, the mycelial swarm is really good because it lowers the cost. So see what's more expensive. Usually blight scarabs, scarabs are dirt cheap. Uh, so, you know, you're, you're not gonna have a problem with that, so probably just buying some Blight Scarabs, or if you maybe manage to sustain them while just, you know, picking up Scarabs from the Blight maps themselves, you know, that's great. But Mycelial Swarm is another option that you can do uh, when just farming these maps. Um, so I, I guess those were, would be the advantages. Now for the disadvantages, I would say that it requires some skill and knowledge. So many of these things here that I said is probably either new for you or not new. 
Uh, there's many different things that, that I can um, talk about in regards of this because not many people do Blight. It's just something that you usually skip or just like place a tower or two even if you do it when it's randomly in your map. Uh, so it, it does require some, I don't know, nuances that are worthwhile knowing. Um, the other thing is, if you're a gambler, then using oil extractors can sometimes possibly screw you over. Most of the time, it's definitely best to use um, oil extractors on rings. Uh, so amulets basically have three anointments, meaning that you can have three oils that give you an anointment, right? Sorry, not three anointments, three oils that give you an anointment, right? And uh, using an oil extractor on that, if you have, for example, one golden oil and two crappy ones, you have a 33% chance in order to get that golden oil. But when you have rings with a golden oil, then you have a 50-50, which makes it great because, well, either you can sell those rings with an anointment for gamblers, or what you can also do is just gamble it yourself. So it maybe isn't the best if you just open stack decks. If you're going to gamble, you know the oil extractors. It's up to you. I always use the oil extractor and I, I don't know if I'm lucky, maybe it's my average or whatever. Um, and actually, I would say that's pretty much it with the downsides. I mean, probably yes, if you are even more tryhard uh, or a very experienced player, there's obviously league start strategies that will be much more beneficial for you. Um, and probably just, you know, overall more profitable. But I would say that for an average Joe running through maps, trying to complete them and just make some extra currency on the side and have some fun with it, uh, this is going to be really good. And if for extra juice, uh, like I mentioned, you can reroll those scarabs that you get uh, and use uh, bases that you get from the Blight for crafting. Um, maybe, like I mentioned, just the harvest ju extra juice is going to be great when just running maps. You know, randomly encounter harvest, it's always some extra juice, it's always some extra currency that you can use for yourself. So you can use that to your advantage like many other things. Alright, well that's gonna be it in regards of the Blight strategy. Like I mentioned before, if you want some uh, some extra content regarding uh, finding items and crafting items for League Starter builds, that can be something. I also have another cool strategy, uh, or at least two, uh, regarding League Start that are really good and really beneficial early on that can grant you a lot of currency um, out of basically nothing. Um, and yeah, overall it's great, so just let me know. Uh, thanks for watching, and see you in the next one.